So you want to learn how to create this? All right, let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a line and we're going to do that by using the rectangle tool by clicking and holding on the pen tool right here in the toolbar. Now, if you want, you can use the pen tool, but the reason why I use the rectangle tool is because it's so much easier to create a straight line. Now, here's a fun little trick. If we double click on the graphics layer on the timeline right here, we can open up the essential graphics panel. Let's go to shape and then change the color of the fill. I'm going for a yellowy color because it matches with the background, but you can pick any color that you want. Just make sure that it pops, it doesn't conflict and it doesn't disappear in the background. Now, if you want, you can either check or uncheck the border. You do not necessarily need a border, but if you do, then make sure that it's in the same color as the fill. To do that, you wanna open the fill, you wanna copy the color code right here, Control C or Command C if you're on a Mac, then close this window, open the border, and then double click on the code, hit Control V or Command V, and now you've pasted the code. And in this essential graphics panel, we can also center the line horizontally as well as vertically by clicking on these two buttons right here. All right, then what we're going to do is we're going to the effects tab right here. And if you don't see it, go to window and then click on effects. It should pop up right here and then type in crop. This is the effect that we're going to use to create our animation. Now drag and drop the crop effect to the graphics layer and then right here in effect controls, go to the crop effect and then click on the stopwatch in front of right. Let's type in 100 and now the line should have disappeared. And then we're going to move forward on the timeline and we're going to create another keyframe by typing in zero. Now, as you can see, two little diamond thingies have been created right here, and those are the keyframes. Now, if we play through this, you can see that the animation looks very linear. So what we're going to do is we're going to be selecting both of those keyframes, and we're going to do that by dragging a box over them. And then we're going to right click on it, click on Bezier. Now, as you will see, the shape of the keyframes have been changed, but don't worry about it because now what we can do is we can click on these handles right here and then play around with them to change the speed a little bit. So if, for example, we will create a bump right here, what it means is that it will go faster here and then it will slow down like so. Next, it is time to create our text. In order to create our first layer of text, we're going to hit T on our keyboard to enable the text tool and then click on the screen anywhere you want and then start typing your text. And then to get your selection tool back, don't forget to press V on your keyboard. In the same panel that we just used for our line, we're going to be stylizing our text to our liking. Down here, we can choose our font. And what I'm going to do in this example is I will use the font Montserrat. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, but that's the one that I'm using. And I will change the size to about 200. Of course, this is all based on personal preference. So feel free to choose a different font or a different color. I'm also going to add a shadow by checking the box right here in front of shadow to create a little bit more dimension. And when we're done, there is one more important step left, and that is to center the text, just like we did with the line. Now to close the panel, what we need to do, we need to click on the hamburger menu right here. And then with the text layer on the timeline still selected, we can go to effect controls. We go down here to text, and here we'll see three icons. We see a circle, a square, and a pen tool. These are masking tools. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on square. And as you can see, a mask now appeared right here on the screen. Now, what we want to do is we want to create this mask over the text. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold shift and then click on these two corners right here and then drag it out. Then we're going to click on the mask and we're going to reposition it. So the bottom of the mask is touching the upper edge of the line right here. We have already animated the line, so now it is time to animate the first text layer. So let's move our toggle head, which is this thing right here where we want the text animation to start. Then let's scroll down in the effect controls tab to position and then enable the stopwatch in front of position to create our first keyframe. So this is our end position. So we're going to move this keyframe forward and then we're going to click and hold the right value right here, which is the vertical value. And we're going to drag that down until the text has disappeared. Now, again, as you can see, another keyframe has been created right here. And now it is time to actually time the animation because now it's very random. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this keyframe back to make the movement a little bit faster. Again, let's change these keyframes to Bezier and then create two more keyframes to create that subtle bouncing effect that you saw at the beginning of this video. So this first keyframe right here should be slightly higher and then the last one should be slightly lower. 
The next step is to click and hold on the text layer on the timeline and then hit Alt or Option if you're on the Mac and then drag it to V3. As you can see, now we've duplicated the first text layer. If that didn't happen, if you just move the text layer up one, then just hit Ctrl Z or Command Z and try again. So all we need to do now is we need to change the text by double clicking on the text on the screen right here. Type in your text. And if you want to stylize or change the style of the text layer, then double click on the text layer to open up the essential graphics panel again. Those two text layers, they are still on top of each other. So we need to go to the effect controls tab right here. And the first thing that we're going to do is invert the mask. And then we're going to change the position. Now you can do two things. You can either delete all the keyframes and then create new ones, or you can just change the value of the keyframes, which is what I did, because then the timing is the same. Now, even though the animation is the same, we do not want to start it at the same time. So now that we are done with those keyframes, we're going to be selecting them all by again, dragging a box over all of those keyframes. And then we're going to move them backwards a little bit or forward, however you look at it and find a spot where we want this animation to start. You might think that we're done, but we're not done just yet. What we're going to do now is we're going to select all of the three layers on the timeline and then right click on it and click on nest. Now let's call it title animation. And as you can see, now we've consolidated all of those three layers into one. And the reason why we do this is because we want the entire animation to disappear at the same time. So instead of having to add the same effects to all three layers, we can just easily do it this way. So let's go back to the effects tab right here and then type in transform. Then again, drag and drop the transform effect to the nested sequence. And then in effect controls right here, we're going to be doing a few things. Firstly, we need to find a point where we want the disappearing act to start. Then we need to create keyframes for skill. So let's click on the stopwatch. And now as you can see, it is at 100. So we're going to move forward and we're going to type in zero to create another keyframe. Depending on what you want, you can now reposition the keyframes if needed, depending on how fast you want the animation to disappear again. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for opacity and we're going to align those two keyframes with the scale keyframes. Now to make this look a little bit more sleek, we need some motion blur. And instead of having to add the blur effect, there's actually a fun little trick that I wanna show you now. So instead of adding a Gaussian blur effect or a directional blur effect, what we're going to do is inside this effect, inside the transform effect, there is this option, use compositions shutter angle, and we're going to tick the box in front of it. And then down here, we're going to change the shutter angle to 360. Now, as you can see, we have created a very natural looking motion blur without putting any effort in it, which is just great. Next to motion blur, something else that really helps bring your titles to life is sound design. So make sure that you watch this video right here to learn how to do that or watch this video right here that YouTube thinks is best for you. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, do all the YouTube things and then watch either of those videos.